to Satya Narayana. Um, it's a pleasure to be amongst you. I uh, realized just looking at the audience a few things. One is that I'm extremely happy they needed to bring in more chairs. The interest in this space is growing. Uh, the second is that I saw so many familiar faces that I think uh, we've been in this space uh, for a while now. Uh, but, but just before I begin, I want to share with you, I was sitting this morning around 6.30, having a cup of tea, uh, looking at, you know, what some slides that the team had put together for me and uh, using it as the perfect excuse to miss exercise. And uh, my husband got a call from someone and you know, they said that there was a patient at the hospital who uh, was a young man who had had uh, multiple fractures. He had an, had an accident. He was admitted in Apollo, and he said the bill is six lakhs. He's been seen by the orthopedics people and the cosmetic surgeons, uh, and he has an infection. So uh, my husband said, I'll check and I'll get back. And then he calls me and he says, you know, how can he have an infection and how can his bill be six lakhs and, you know, what's happening? I've never heard of such a thing at Apollo. So I immediately called the orthopedics doctor. And the orthopedics uh, consultant said, uh, yes, I know the case. Very this thing, young man. He had an accident in Pune. He was operated upon there. He was moved to a nursing home in Hyderabad, which is where his parents are. He was treated for two and a half months before he came into Apollo. Uh, he had been in Apollo for less than three weeks. Uh, his bill was under a lakh of rupees. He had had three surgeries. When he came in, he was combating infection. He had um, antibiotic resistant strap and multiple other complications, including muscle wasting. And uh, the internal fixator had also been displaced. I looked at the series of information. What was the first cut that we had heard? And what was the next level of information? What could HIS do to change this? And what are the type of challenges that all of us in this room are really facing today? Because whatever we dream about, and the topic I was given was hospital of the future. Whatever we dream about, we cannot dream alone. We are part of a connected ecosystem. We are dependent on the individuals, the society, the, the prevention of accidents, the ability to call a national antibiotic policy, uh, the information available at GPs. And I think GPs and clinicians are the front line of care. And the ability to interconnect them all the way into the healthcare system, it's a multidimensional factor. And I remember Martin Luther King, who said it really boils down to this, that all life is interrelated. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied into a single garment of destiny. And whatever affects one directly affects all of us indirectly. So let us continue to weave together a destiny of better health for all citizens of our world. And I think it's in that context or framework that we set anything that we do in healthcare. Mr. Satyanarayana has been extremely um, self-effacing of the tremendous achievements that have happened in the AP government. Uh, in the evolution of the healthcare system, in the appropriate application of technology, and their ability to sustain some fairly complex initiatives. I think AP has the, uh, uh, the, the single state which has been able to bring 80, 80 million lives under uh, insurance scheme and sustain that for over 36 months. Besides that, multiple other things which have happened. And I think that uh, and many others are all interconnected. In the Arugya Shri scheme, they have more than 400 hospitals connected, all of them using that single system, all of them submitting claims, including the photograph, everyone who's been trained in how to use that. And their turnaround time for information is faster than any system I've ever seen anywhere in the world. I also, in another hat, uh, work with the U.S. healthcare system and a multitude of others, so I understand this complexity. So it's in the framework of some of this that I am going to share some thoughts on interconnected healthcare, a few thoughts on what we're doing at Polo Health System, because I was asked specifically to share those insights, and then may share what we could do as a community. But before I really start, may I please ask for a simple thing so that I understand better 
uh, who I'm talking to. How many of you are from a hospital? Hospital administrator, CIO, doctor. Um, okay, that's nice. It's about 20% of the audience, I would say, approximately. How many from um, the government besides Mr. Satyanarayana and Mr. Bedi? Uh, okay, that's also very nice. So policy makers, influencers of these decisions, we're very happy. And, and how many are from the vendor or the supplier world? Okay, so that's uh, clearly showing this looks like a space for opportunity. Uh, but, but good afternoon to all of you. It's a pleasure to be here and share some of these thoughts. Um, I think many of these by now, the world has understood and India has understood. But our problems remain accessibility, affordability. How can we afford, how can our population afford the health care that has now become accessible to many parts of the country, even though not universally? The supply demand gap in healthcare, the number of beds, the number of doctors, uh, the number of nurses, paramedics, uh, the urban rural divide, the in inadequate efficiencies in care delivery. The biggest fact which really continues to pain us is that knowledge exists, yet we have not been able to assimilate this knowledge across a wide cross-section. And finally, the uh, standards. These are some of our challenges. We believe that there are a multitude of technology solutions which could help. Technology can never replace the healthcare system. It can only assist. But it is now being uniformly accepted that the appropriate application of information technology in healthcare can actually help uh, as much as possible possibly the, the invention of a new antibiotic or a new cure for cancer, because it is this need of a continuum of care which would be provided in an environment of continuous in use or a continuous availability of ubiquitous information, which could change decision-making, access to information, treatment methodologies, and efficiencies of flow and costs. So considering this, I think it's safe for all of us to say that information enabling care is that which is safe, timely, effective, and sustainable. Care which is equitable, available to everyone in our population, efficient, and we have the highest throughputs, and is patient-centric, is really the standard that we're seeking and that information can assist in making this happen. So the ability for information systems to really aggregate clinical information across a multitude of scenarios and use this to improve the quality of care while reducing costs is really the challenge that all of us face, but more importantly, I think the opportunity that exists or that the system is affording us. The connected healthcare system as we view it is really at the center of this world is the connected patient who knows about his current ailment or the ability to prevent it Imagine actually sitting here, one of our distinguished speakers, the one coming next, Dr. Singh, said he wouldn't shake hands because he has a fever. Um, yesterday, there was a very important speaker who couldn't come or show up because he had a fever. Dr. Girinath was due to visit us day before yesterday to meet with a large foreign team, also couldn't come because of a fever. I wonder if six, six weeks before the onset of the monsoon, if everybody got some kind of SMSs to say the season is coming, do you want to increase your dose of vitamins? Do you want to take a flu shot? What else can you do to prevent it? And I think I'm using a very simplistic example. But the methodology to use information, spread it across a widespread population, and play a role in preventive health care, whether it's the use of statins in preventing cardiac problems or the monitoring of LDL and HDL, but there are a multitude of scenarios which really lend themselves to what we can do in that connected world and how we can bring information in the hands of the connected patient or the connected customer and his family. The connect clinician is equally if not more important because in India where 70 percent of our people live in the villages, the front line of care is really the small GPs and the small nursing homes, but the individual GPs and the small nursing homes. 80 percent of care may be private sector but almost 86% of that care is happening in hospitals which are less than 20 beds. If these statistics were true, and it is true, what can we do to empower those individual frontline warriors in this 
battle of good health